What's up everybody, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfail. Welcome back for another Lotro Game Guide. And today we are diving into the ultimate crafting tutorial for Lord of the Rings Online. If you have never played this game before, or if you have never done crafting in this game before, this is for you. We are recording this in late March of 2023 in terms of timelines, so you know the relevancy of this video depending on when you're going to be playing. I have a brand new character here who is in the village of Combe, and I have a quest here, which is a crafting tutorial quest, uh, which is leading us here to the crafting hall in Combe. If you have ever played an MMORPG before, it's no different here in the sense that every single area that you start off in will eventually lead you to a crafting tutorial uh, within your starting area and there's different starting areas in this game. There's you know one in Hobbiton There's one here in Archit. Uh, there are there's one in Arid Luin so on and so forth It doesn't really matter where you go the crafting tutorial is going to be the same We're gonna walk you through the crafting tutorial today And I'm gonna give you some of my tips and tricks to get the most out of crafting in this game now before we go any further, this is the part of the video where I say please like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon if you haven't already done so so that you can continue to get game guides from me, whether it's for Lord of the Rings Online, Star Wars Yard Republic, or any of the other MMORPGs I play. And don't forget to check out the other playlists because I do a lot of RPGs, tabletop games, and of course books, TV shows, film reviews, and beyond. And also support if you can with a super chat a super thanks or a membership here on the channel. We also have a Patreon page if you want to get involved with our point and click adventure game, fantasy book series, and tabletop world. There's also a Discord if you want to come game with us in Lord of the Rings Online, Star Wars Republic, or other MMORPGs that we play. So without further ado, let us get into the actual meat of today's video. We have been told to meet Roderick Carver by this craft hall in Combs south of Archit. Uh, it's on the left hand. He wants to. Sp uh, Edward Carver wants us to speak with his brother Roderick about taking up a crafting vocation. Now, vocations in this game are essentially classes that you can pick, but there's a combination of abilities, and we're going to be diving into what those mean here. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and head on into the crafting hall here. By the way, I'll open up my map really quick. If you don't know where we're at, we're in Combe, um, and yeah. Let's head in here to the crafting hall. Every village has a crafting hall. Every town has a crafting hall. There's lots of them. So we have Roderick Carver here. Let's go ahead and give him a hail. How can I be of service? My brother sent you, eh? Ah, uh, well, he should. The business up in Archit's unfortunate, but it serves to remind us of the importance of skilled craftsmen. It's going to take a great deal of labor to rebuild Archit and supply the people of Breeland with everything they need to prosper. The Mistress of Apprentices to my left can help you choose a vocation in which to specialize. A vocation is a bundle of three crafting professions with overlapping skills. But choose your vocation with care because you will expand a great deal of time and energy improving your skill with the professions under its purview. Once the Mistress of Apprentices has welcomed you to your chosen vacation, vocation, be sure to speak with the provisioner within the craft hall. She's going to sell you the tools of your trade. Every profession has its own, of course, so don't be over shy with your cone push. The novices will be happy to sell you any recipes you might wish to have, though I can tell you now that you will already have to know how to make a thing or two. Equip the crafting tools you plan on using and find an appropriate facility. The craft hall's got a forge, workbench, and an oven available for your use, and you can begin to practice your skills. You can advance in your chosen professions as you practice and seek out the teachings of others in the field. And I hope you're going to become a skilled craftsman because it's going to bring profit to you and Breland. So essentially he just gave us an extremely high level overview of the crafting system and wants us to talk to the Mistress of Apprentices to choose a vocation. Now vocations are a combination of abilities and you do need to sort of take a little time here and think about what it is that you want to do with your character. So the different names here just refer to the combination of abilities. So the armorer is primarily a metalsmith with prospecting and tailoring as additional abilities. The explorer is a tailor who also has forestry and prospecting. An armsman is a weaponsmith who can prospect 
and refine wood. A tinker is a jeweler who can also prospect and cook. A yeoman is a cook who is also a farmer and a tailor. A woodsman is a woodworker who is also a forester and a farmer. And then a historian is a scholar who also is a weaponsmith and a farmer. Now in some cases these vocations include a crafting vocation with a couple of harvesting. For example, the explorer. The tailor is the, cra is the, is the crafting vocation, whereas forestry and prospecting are harvesting. Um, while not just harvesting, it's also the refinement of the materials from those things. Uh, the weaponsmith, as an example, uh, has a prospector attached to it, but it also has a woodworker. So it's two different crafting uh, skills with one harvesting. Now, it's kind of rare in this game to uh, pick one that can allow you to do everything. Uh, as a general rule, people set up lots of different alts if you're going to get serious into crafting in this game because you can't do everything on one character. A good example of this would be, um, let's say I want to be a, um, a woodsman, but I also want to be able to make weapons for myself. So I would take the woodsman, be able to make my own woodworking, and I can harvest the wood, but I can't do any prospecting to make or, or or make any metal weapons, so I would need to then make a, say, um, armsman who could make weapons and also prospect. So things to think about when you're going to be doing this. Now, crafting in The Lord of the Rings Online is more of a, I would say, a supplemental ability than anything else. It's a great way to make cool cosmetic gear for your character, and if you do get into the later... Uh, reaches of the game the end game crafting gear crafted gear can be quite powerful but in the early stages of the game you're going to be leveling so quickly that it might often feel like you're just constantly out leveling the gear that you're making for yourself so it might feel like it's pointless in the early stages of the game but i assure you that it does pan out in the long run if you're going to stick with it into the later stages of the game so for this uh, purposes of this particular tutorial, um, we're just going to pick one. Um, probably, let's look here. I think we want to just go with the Explorer because that allows us to do tailoring while also gathering wood and gathering um, ore. Greetings. So each one of these has a description that you can... Um, read through if you would like more information. An explorer can live off the land, crafting leather armor and clothing while gathering any resource they come across. Explorer is an excellent choice for anyone who wears light or medium armor or wants to specialize in resource gathering. Do you want to learn this trade? It tells you tailor, forester, prospect. And if you don't like that, you can click cancel, go back, pick a different one. Um, but for the purposes of, of showing you how this works, we'll just pick the explorer. You can always change it later on. So you have now trained a craft vocation, which allows you to perform three different craft professions. The trainer has given you some starter tools and a handy guide to explain more about how to advance your career as a crafter. Note that the starter tools are poor quality. You will want to upgrade them when you can. So right now, let's talk about that component of the game for just a minute, because... You do have tools for each one of the different crafting lines that you have, the professions. One is the tailor, which requires tailoring tools. One is the forester, which requires a forester axe. And the other one is a prospector, which requires a prospecting tool. Now, if you are playing this game the way it was originally designed, you can only ever equip one of these tools at any given time over here in your um, craft tool slot. So if I knew that I was going to be doing um, tailoring, I would make sure to equip my tailoring tools and then I would then be able to tailor. But if I'm out in the wild and I would crub across uh, a wood node that I need to harvest, I would not be able to harvest that wood node unless I had an inf a, a forester's axe equipped. So I would need to switch that and equip the axe and then I can then harvest the node. Or if I come across mining nodes, I would need to make sure that I have my prospecting tool equipped to be able to harvest the node. Now, if you notice here, um, these prospecting tools are just basic tools 
They don't have any stats associated with them. And as they mention here in this little pop-up, the starter tools are poor quality. You will want to upgrade them when you can. Notice they only have a 30 durability and they all say brittle, which means they will wear out very, very quickly. Now, the best way to get tools in the game is to have a metal smith, I believe is what it's called. Um, double check here. It's the, yeah, it's the metalsmith, the armorer. Uh, the metalsmith can not only make armor, but they can also make all of the various crafting tools, and they have various tiers that they can make. And one of the interesting things about that is that the higher level you get, the more buffs you get, the more stats you get on your crafting tools. So they will begin to have things like a three second reduction to the time it takes to harvest a node or a 10% critical chance on crafting a critical version of an item. So you'll start to get bonuses and stats on those tools. The metalsmith is the only in-game crafter that can make tools for all of the crafting professions. However, there's also another way that you can get a tool and that's through the Lotro store. We're going to open up the Lotro store and take a look at this right away because if you happen to have Lotro points either stored up or you're planning on buying some points, you will be able to find what's called a universal toolkit somewhere in here. I'm just typing universal to make sure I can find it down in here. Um, universal toolkit. So if you look at this, the um, universal toolkit there's two different versions there's the basic version and the enduring version so the universal toolkit is a single toolkit that allows you to use the uh, one single tool for all of the crafting and harvesting professions in the game so rather than needing individual tools say an, you know like i have right now i have three individual tools for my character right I have the axe, I have the prospecting pick, and I have the tailor tools. This instead gives me a universal toolkit that I can use for everything. Then there's the enduring universal toolkit, which has additional stats and bonuses on it. So these are both great tools if you're going to be doing lots of different things. Um, the universal toolkit and has a basic set of bonuses on it, and then the enduring universal toolkit has a has an, a better uh, version of stats and bonuses on it but this is only if you're really going to get into crafting like if you really 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 want to get into crafting and you have the lotro points this might be something that you want to do um i don't really need it but for the purposes of this tutorial and i've got the points to burn i'm going to go ahead and show you guys what i'm talking about here so if i wanted to pick up this universal toolkit as opposed to going to the you know making my own or going to the auction hall and buying a toolkit from someone else i would buy this tool right and we're gonna go ahead and buy that item because I, ha I have the points okay that's gonna put that into my inventory and you'll notice that I now have this universal toolkit which gives me a 20% weaponsmith critical chance a 20% woodworker critical chance and a minus three second prospector mining duration I then also get 20% tailor critical cook critical so on and so forth and minus three to harvesting foresting scholar researching so on and so forth and now instead of needing three different tools for everything I just put this down in here and I have a universal toolkit that does everything it allows me to harvest it allows me to craft and I don't ever have to have individual tools but again this is only an option if you have lotro points to spend or to spare otherwise you could have a metal smith and make your own tools or you could have another player make those tools for you or you could buy them off the auction hall also notice that once we have chosen our crafting vocation down here on my hotbar i have two abilities related to harvesting now every vocation is going to have different harvesting abilities um, and in this case i can harvest wood and i can harvest uh, mining nodes or nodes and these two abilities allow me to track 
those individual nodes. So if I wanted to track wood, I would simply turn this on, and when I'm out in the world, uh, I would see wood nodes popping up on my mini map. And if I'm tracking ore nodes, I would see the ore nodes popping up on my mini map. And we will probably go out and, and check that in a little bit. Uh, matter of fact, why don't we go check that right now before we get any deeper into this? That way I can show you what this looks like. Um, so that there's no confusion on, on, on anything. We'll run up the road here. Usually there's some, there's some, no, oh, matter of fact, right there. I'm tracking nodes right now, and you'll see a blue arrow on my mini map that's pointing me in the direction of a copper deposit. So we would run over in this direction. We would find the node. There it is, right there. And we would harvest said node. Like so. Now because I'm using the Universal Toolkit, it's a very quick... Um... Now see, there's a, there's a... Right there I see a Rowan branch, but it's not popping up on my mini-map because I'm not tracking wood at the moment. However, if I were to switch over and track wood, boom, that now becomes visible on my mini-map. We would run over there and harvest that. It also shows me one over there to the left somewhere that we can go get. So that's how the node tracking works um, in terms of how you can track and find nodes within the world. Also notice on the bottom left that we are earning adventuring XP when we are harvesting these items. It's another way to advance your character, which we talked about that in the ultimate leveling guide that we did the other day. Um, the fact that harvesting, refining, and crafting all earn you experience points. It's just another way to advance your character. We're getting XP as we go along. That's how the tools work. That's how harvesting works. That's how the node tracking works. Let us, let us run back to the crafting hall and continue this tutorial here all right now the mistress of apprentices wants to talk to us now and she's got an introduction to the three different crafting professions we took forestry prospecting and tailoring might I take a moment of your time? So she says here, forestry is the collection and refinement of wooden hides found among the fallen timber and beasts throughout Middle Earth. The refined materials that foresters provide are used by woodworkers and tailors to ply their trades. Todd Brushwood, the supplier here, has offered to teach all of those who are looking to set out as foresters. So we would take this quest, and then we would go talk to the supplier. And he would say, what hello there. I, do for you? I hear that you're interested in learning the ways of forestry. If so, you've come to the right place. I'll try not to move too quickly for you, but if I do, speak with me again to ask more pointed questions. I almost forgot the most important thing for every new forester, which is ingredients. Everything you need is inside this crate. Now, suppliers provide the secondary ingredients necessary for foresters to treat the materials that they collect. As this is a collection profession, there are no additional recipes to purchase, as all are learned automatically as you advance. So this is a very important distinction between crafting professions and collecting professions. So if we open up our uh, crafting tab here, I have tailor, forester, and prospector. Forester and prospector are collection professions. Tailor is a crafting profession, which has recipes associated with it. All right. Now, when I say recipes, things like making cloaks, making armor, making different types of armor, processing different things. Forestry, on the other hand, is simply the processing of leather and wood. Leather being hides that you find from the mobs that you kill, like bears and boars and wolves and deer, and wood, which is harvested from nodes similar to the way ore is also harvested from nodes. Most of the collection professions in the game require you to harvest things from a node. However, some professions like forestry and I believe scholars, for example, cooks as well, will rely on things that not only are um, harvested from nodes, but also found off of body drops in the world. So you'll get ingredients that drop from mobs. But for the most part, collection items are gathered through the harvesting process, which you're, if you've ever played an MMORPG, you'll be familiar with harvesting throughout the world. So he has given us a crate, which has within it some items that we would need to create um, the next step of this recipe. So he wants us to create, if you look at the 
quest journal here. Uh, he wants us to create a piece of brushed light leather and a thin rowan board. So this is going to be um, the introduction of forestry. So this is the refinement of collected items. So we need to find a workbench, which is this right here. Oops, is it workbench? I always forget. I think it's the workbench. Yes, workbench here. Um, every crafting profession has a different... Um, you know, there's the forge over there, there's a oven over in there, and here's the workbench, which we would use for our purposes. So, after you've harvested a node, you need to refine that down into something. So, for example, if I want to come over here and make a piece of armor, if I look at rough cloth armor, it requires two brush leathers and a bolt of rough cloth. Now, if you remember what the tutorial told us a minute ago the supplier sells secondary crafting ingredients but we need primary crafting ingredients the collected ingredients for the actual recipe so in this case the brushed light leather are the collected items that we need to gather and then the bolt of rough cloth would be something that is sold by suppliers and profession vendors this is the secondary component of the recipe but how do I get brushed light leather well I come over to my forestry tab and I look here and I have a recipe for brushed light leather, which requires two light hides. So I need to then make a light hide. Now the quest wants me to refine a brushed light leather is what he says. He wants one brushed light leather. So we're just going to create one of those. He's scraping the leather there. Okay. Uh, we have dinged. We don't need to talk about hobbies today. Um, we also need to create a thin rowan board. So how do we create a thin rowan board? Well, we would need some rowan wood. Thankfully, we harvested some, but also the crate he gave us gave us enough to actually complete this recipe. We'll go ahead and chop that down into, into form. And I've made a thin rowan board. And now we will go back and turn in to Todd Brushwood, the supplier. How can I be of service? Both the leather and the wood appear to have been treated without a hint of impurity. It's a very good effort. It proves that you are prepared to continue your work towards becoming a master forester. Okay. That's the introduction to forestry. Now, we're going to do the same thing here for each one Stay of the additional um, crafting professions that, and harvesting professions that we chose. So, in this case... Um, we're going to repeat the process for the prospector. Greetings. I'm not going to read this because it's the, it's the exact same dialogue. Open up the crate. We're going to get some items for our um, prospecting. We're going to come over here to the forge. We're going to click the forge. We're going to go to our prospecting tab. I need to make a copper ingot. We'll just make one of those. We'll go back and turn in. What can I do for you? All right. But now we're actually going to talk about a crafting Stay profession, on. which is different than the gathering professions. Tailoring is a goal worth pursuing, and there are many fine tailors here in Combe. Um, so let's go talk to Sarah Crabgrass, a novice tailor found near the workbench here in the craft hall of Combe. So she's going to be over here. Now, introduction to tailoring. What can I do for you? I hear that you're interested in learning the ways of tailor. You need ingredients. Everything you need to make a rough cloth clock. Well, if I can learn how to speak. Everything you need to make a rough cloth cloak is inside this crate. It says here, tailor vendors sell ingredients and recipes that are a vital part of any tailor's training and continued work. Now, remember what they told us with the, the two harvesting professions earlier there are no recipes associated with forestry and prospecting as you level up these professions you will get the next tier which allows you to harvest and refine the next tier of resources um, and we'll get into that a little bit later on in the tutorial but tailoring is different because you actually have recipes that you need to learn now let's Let's complete this really quick before we talk about the actual recipe component, because this is another area where there's a couple of different ways to get recipes. So in this case, in order to make the rough cloth cloak, we come back over to the workbench, find the rough cloth cloak, and remember, it needed a brush light leather and a bolt of rough cloth, but they gave us a bolt of rough cloth. So instead of needing to purchase that from the supplier, it gave it 
gave us that with the with the um, crate here. So we're just going to go ahead and make this and go from there. We'll craft the item. We have made the cloth cloak. Now we can turn in and what wrap can I do this for you? up. Now, uh, the next part of this is the ingredients. So they told us that the tailor sells ingredients Greetings, for us. Friend. So if we were to click on her, she's going to sell components that we would need, you know, secondary ingredients, also um, different recipes here. Okay. Now, we can filter these based off of the tiers that they are. So they have various tiers of recipes that you can learn. Um, now, because we're so early in our crafting profession, we can't really do any of the additional tiers because we are currently in what's known as the apprentice tier. So the next available recipes, as an example, um, let's look at tier two. These would be the um, journeyman recipes so the journeyman tier is the next tier beyond the apprentice so one way that you can purchase the recipes is for in-game coin so you would come to a tailor and you would purchase the recipes for coin and you would go through here and purchase all the recipes for a given tier in this case a novice has tier two and tier three recipes or the journeyman and i believe the next one is the expert yeah expert tailor if you want to learn higher tier recipes, you have to find a higher tier tailor. In this case, this is a starter town, a starter village. They're only going to have the base recipes here for the first couple of tiers. So you would need to wait until you got to, for example, Bree um, to find the next tiers. And then probably Esseldine beyond that if you go to like the tailoring guild. Um, so that's one way. However, the other option is you can come here to the Lotro store. And again, this is an optional thing, just like with the Universal Toolkit. And I'm going to have to remember where to go in, but I think it's in the Crafting tab, and you can go to Ingredient... Uh, I don't think it's... I think it's Recipes. And then pick your, you know, your chosen profession. In this case, we are a tailor. And it has an Apprentice Tailor Recipe Book. And it says, Get all of the recipes in a tier. It says... Uh, get all the Apprentice Tailor recipes in a single purchase. Note, this does not include one-shot or reputation recipes, and it does not deliver duplicate recipes you may already own in this set. All delivered recipes will be listed in your chat log. The book only includes recipes that can be found on vendors and in res random treasure drops. This is very important. So, everything you can buy off of the merchant, which we just looked at, you can get with this right here. So instead of spending in-game currency, you can spend Lotro points, and you're going to get all the recipes found on a vendor for this tier, the Apprentice tier, and any of the recipes for this tier that are found as a part of random treasure drops. What it does not include are specialty recipes, which are the one-shots, which are usually really rare um, uh, super powerful recipes or reputation recipes that can only be achieved by earning reputation with a faction and then buying those recipes from that faction merchant. Um, so this is another way. If you have an accumulation of points like I do, this is an easy option, especially if you've played the game a bunch like I have and you've already done crafting on other characters and you just don't want to deal with it again. You just buy all the recipes and you don't have to worry about running around and trying to buy them from the various merchants and then you go from the tiers. And it will only let you learn the tier that you currently have available so you can't you can't buy for a tier that you don't have access to so, so that i don't ha i don't have access to the journeyman tier yet it won't let me purchase anything for the journeyman tier it will only let me purchase recipes for the apprentice tier so that's how you get recipes you can either buy them from a merchant you can buy them through the lotro store or you can find one shot recipes that are dropped in the world or you can get them from uh, reputation merchants also uh, players might sell certain recipes on the broker now what's Sorry, next mommy. practice makes perfect it appears you have learned much about being an explorer now allow me to give you a little something for your effort give me a moment and then speak with me again so she's going to give me three universal ingredient packs these are very interesting things uh ingredient well we'll dive into this here in a second um let's turn in this quest how can i be of service your reward for this quest is an item that can be found in the Lotro store. This item is an alternative to standard ingredients that are found in the game world. 
With it, you can craft any recipe of the current proficient of the correct proficiency tier without the need for additional ingredients. These universal ingredients packs can only be purchased in the Lotro store. So to understand what they're talking about here is if I go here to the rough cloth cloak, right? It requires two brushed light leathers and one bolt of rough cloth to make that recipe, right? However, there's also a clickable tab here that I can click and I can choose to use universal, universal ingredient packs. Now I already have a few on me because of some previous quests I've done, which gave me those as a reward. Now, if I choose to use an universal, universal ingredient pack, I subs, I no longer need to use regular ingredients. It will substitute the universal ingredient pack for the regular ingredients. However, as it says here in orange text, items crafted with ingredient packs will be bound to your account upon creation. So they cannot be traded to other players. They cannot be sold to other players. You cannot, uh, do anything with them other than use them on your own account so if you make something with a universal ingredient pack it is bound to you and only you these are useful for in my opinion when you get a little higher in level and you know you're going to be you know a certain tier for quite some time and you come across a one-shot recipe that you want to make and it requires some really weird random rare ingredients that you don't necessarily want to track down i would use a universal ingredient pack for that item because it's unique for me and i know i'm going to be using it for quite some time so we'll go ahead and finish that and accept that and that put it into our wallet which is something else that we don't need to talk about in this episode okay so let's talk a little bit more about the leveling process of how do you how do you earn your way up through the tiers um, of the various um, crafting and harvesting professions because right now we're only in the apprentice and there's this bar here which just says 14 out of 200 experience towards proficiency now we talked about this in the general crafting guide that I have. So if you want to learn more about this, you can check out that guide. This is the ultimate beginner's guide, which is slightly different. Um, each tier, we're in tier one right now, which is the apprentice tier. Each tier has a level associated with it. In this case, we have 200. We need 200 experience points before we unlock the next tier. So how do we do that? Well, if you'll notice when you click on a recipe here, brush light leather is an example, it says apprentice craft XP earned six. So that means I'm going to get six points to create this recipe. So if I do that right now, I'm at 14 points. So if I go over here to the workbench and I make one of those, it's going to go from 14 to 20. Boom. So in essence, I would need to do that a whole lot more in order to ding to the next tier. Now, it the same thing goes for any of these other ones, whether it's prospecting, uh, forestry, or tailoring. Everything is broken into tiers. Now, each tier has two different levels. Now, I haven't leveled this character up, so I can't actually show you what it looks like on this character but I can on another character. So give me a second here. We're gonna log out and we're gonna switch over to a different character where I can show you what it looks like when you've leveled up and unlocked all of the tiers or at least many of the tiers in the game so that you can kind of understand how it works and what are the benefits to leveling up and working your way through the various tiers. Why did it cancel? There we go. I think we're leveling now, logging out. I might've hit the escape button by accident. <laughs> it happens. Get a little click happy. <laughs> Alright everybody, so I am on my hunter now. My original hunter, Rinfail Fuwar. And if we open up my crafting tab, this guy's an explorer, which is the same profession that I had chosen on the other character. But you'll notice that he has unlocked all of these different tiers. And you'll notice that not only has he unlocked the tiers, but you'll notice that he has... Uh, the base proficiency represented by this uh, dull kind of brown anvil icon on the left but also he has mastered the proficiency of each tier which is represented by this gold colored yellow colored uh anvil icon what does that mean well going back to the character we were just on remember how we were working our way through and we needed 200 points to work our way through that tier 
So what we'd need here is instead of 200 points, it tells me I need 840 points to get through this particular tier. So I go over to like, um, I don't think I've done it on any of these characters, on any of these tiers yet. So um, I would need to get 840 points to get general proficiency of this tier. Once that happens, I then get access to this icon, which means I have gained proficiency at that tier. Then, as with the Eastment tier that I'm working on right now, I begin filling up the gold bar, which is mastery of that. As a general rule, it's double the points. So if it was 840 points for this one, it's going to be, you know, 1600 whatever points for the next one. So in this case, it was, you know, I don't know how many points for the first tier and then 1520 points towards the next tier. So what's the difference between general proficiency and mastery of a tier? Well, that's going to depend on a couple of different things. First and foremost is, are we talking about the tailoring, the actual crafting, or are we talking about the harvesting professions? Let's go ahead and, by the way, I'm going to back out to, uh, let's see here. Let's go to Rivendell. The reason I'm doing this, the reason I'm moving is because the music here is obnoxiously loud. <laughs> I would like something a little, little more tranquil as we continue to uh, explain the rest of this here. That was not planned, everybody. I didn't. I didn't realize where he was camped out at, and the the Rohan music can be quite obnoxious sometimes. That's a little better. A little bit of a uh, Rivendell music here. Get a view of the last homely house there in the background as we talk about the rest of this. Ah, much better. Okay, so when you're looking at say forestry, and we're looking at a tier that I've mastered, when you're creating an item you have the ability to do a crit version of a recipe now right now I have a base chance of critting well what does it mean when I crit well instead of only getting one brushed ritter mark leather per combine a critical version would give me three brushed ritter mark leathers for the combine but I only have a base chance of five percent to actually crit and that's going to change that percentage is going to change based on any buffs I might have, the whatever tools I might have, in this case I have a universal toolkit, those things will adjust those chances. But I can also use these optional items, in this case a piece of oak bark, which would add an additional 35%. Now I don't actually have one of those at the moment, so let's see if I have any recipe tiers. I don't think I have any on me where I could do this. I might with the tailor though. Well, let's, let's not get confused at the moment. Um, so first and foremost, a crit version for any crafting proficiency means that when I'm refining something, instead of only getting one, I get three. So it benefits you to master a tier if you want to be able to get crit versions to be able to get more out of your combines. However, mastering a proficiency is far more powerful and beneficial for the actual crafting professions than it is for the harvesting professions. And here's why. Let's just let's pick a random tier here. Let's pick the master tier which is level 40 to 50 gear. And let's pick uh, the medium armor for, say, here. The superb campaigner's armor. I don't have any of the crit stuff on me, do I? No, I don't. Well, it doesn't really matter, so let's just, let's just look at this. So, one of the first things you'll notice with um, the crit versions is that right now I have a base chance of 25% to create a crit version of my recipe. Now the difference between a regular version of armor and a crit version of armor is very simple. Here's the normal version, the protector's armor. It has a certain amount of stats, right? 40, uh, you know, 1937 armor, 68 agility, so on and so forth. The crit version is this right here. Significantly more armor class, significantly more stats and bonuses. So you're going to want to um, create, you're going to want to get the mastery of your individual tiers because that is what allows you to make the crit versions. If I go here to my West Minute, um, you'll notice they have barely any recipes and I, and I cannot unlock, I cannot do any of the crit. It says earn mastery for this tier to create superior crafted items and to use optional ingredients increasing your chance for critical success. So until I've unlocked the mastery of that tier, I can't even access the ability to add those bonus materials. But once I've unlocked the mastery, 
I can. I can come in here and I can not only I can apply, you know, which would give me an additional, you know, 35%. Um, but I would then be able to create a crit version of whatever recipe I'm going to be making. So it behooves you to master all of the tiers as you go through here. What worth noting is that you cannot gain mastery in a tier unless you have mastered the tier prior to it. So in order to master journeyman, I have to master apprentice. In order to master, you know, expert, I would have to master journeyman. So on and so forth. So before I can even start to master Westminit, I would need to master Eastminit, which I haven't done yet. I'm about halfway through that tier. So that's something very important to know about the crit versions of things. Now there's something else that's really fun with crafting, and that is the ability to make different versions of items. Now this starts to, it doesn't really work so well in the early stages. So if I look at the apprentice here, heavy cloth gloves, I can make one version of it. That's it. Journeyman, if I go to light armor, I can make one version of that. Expert tier light armor. Oh, I can make three versions. What does that mean? Well, there's basic cotton armor. Then there's dwarf make cotton armor. And then there is elven cotton armor. Now, in some cases, this is only a visual difference. So if we were to look at the visuals here, I would uh, look at that's the base cotton armor right there. Then the dwarf make looks like that. And then the elven cotton looks like that. So each one is slightly different. Sometimes, however, they will have different stats. Let's see if that's the case here. Um, I think these are all the same for this particular tier. Um, let's look at the next tier. Let's look at, uh, say, master tier. And let's go to the protector's armor. In this case, I have four different versions I can make. The basic protector's armor, the dwarf make armor, the elven protector armor, and the westerness protector's armor. And each one of these is going to give me a slightly different look for that. So that's something to pay attention to when you're making armor or weapons, is that there are going to be different types that you can make, and you get access to more types of items as you level up throughout the game. And I think kind of, it kind of caps out around four, and not everything has four. Some of them only have two, like this one only has two. Uh, different versions here um, so it just kind of depends on what you're making and you know the recipes that you have so not only do you want to know about you know, the crit versions but also making sure you pay attention to the various uh, visual versions depending on what you might want cosmetically for your character and that in essence is crafting in a nutshell it is slightly different for each different crafting profession, but as a general rule, in order to craft, you need to be at a crafting table of some type, you need to harvest materials of some type, and you'll need to find recipes to be able to create the items in the game. Now there are some exceptions that are slightly unique. I think the most important would be the uh, cook and the farmer. Because farming actually, not the cook per se, but the farmer in particular, because farming, instead of only requiring a workbench or something, you actually need fields. And there are big fields of land in Bree. So that, why don't we check that out real quick? Not Bree, sorry. Um, Mickle Delving. Let's go to uh, Hobbiton. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Because even though we're not actually going to do any farming on this character or for this guide, since we are talking about the total guide, you know, the, the ultimate uh, crafting guide for new players. I should show you the fields so that you get an understanding of what we're talking about. Um, and farming is one of those things. It's only useful for uh, cooking. So if you're going to be a cook in the game, uh, uh, um, being a farmer is a great way to get all your ingredients. Plus, you can make pipe weed. Um, you can make all the things you need to make pipe weed and ale and beers and, and things of that nature. So if I remember correctly, we can look at the map here and the farms are, yep, just due south of us actually, right up the hill there are some farms. So questions, how do I get up there? There's the crafting area dead ahead of me. So remember how I was talking very early on? About how, you know, we were in Combe and we were at the crafting area for Combe. This is the crafting area for um, Hobbiton. For Mickledelvian, I should say, not Hobbiton. 
because we're in Mickle Deli. And the first of the farms is right over here. So if I was a farmer, I would literally come over here to this farm, to this uh, farmland right here, and I would be able to plant seeds in this area and harvest those nodes to then get the ingredients that I would use to make uh, recipes as a cook. And then there's a workbench here that you can use if you're a farmhand to uh, refine your seeds and things down. This is one little sundry to the uh, crafting professions is that most of them are going to use a workbench of some type, um, whereas the, the farmer actually uses an entire field, uh, which is slightly <laughs> different. So, And there's the, uh, the giant oven that you can use once you are a uh, cook to make items. So, in any case, everybody, Hopefully you've enjoyed my ultimate crafting guide for new players here in Lord of the Rings Online. If you have questions or comments, drop them down in the comments below. I may have missed a couple of things, um, you know, I always do. So if you have additional information that you'd like to add, please let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. And of course, support if you can, because I do get to do this full time thanks to the support of our community members, which helps pay the bills. Advertising doesn't make that much, but it's the community out there who support. So you have memberships here on the channel starting at $3 a month. We do lots of private videos for folks. There's also beyond that, you can do a super thanks on any upload or YouTube short that you see. You can do super chats on any of the live streams or premieres you see. You can go to our Patreon page where my wife and my brother and I have a point and click adventure game, a fantasy book series, and a tabletop game there's also our discord if you want to come hang out with us there play lotro star wars republic and other games with us hopefully you'll check out all the other playlists on my channel and hopefully i will see you in game or in the next video here as we continue playing lord of the rings online and other mmorpgs rpgs tabletop games and beyond until next time stay safe everybody and happy crafting <laughs>